guys, welcome back to another episode at CES. We're here at Narwhal, in which I have CV with me. Thank Hi, you everyone. so much for having us. Vector, our co-host. Oh, hey Vector, come back here. What are you doing? This is so much fun to ride on this robot. Thank you, Narwhal. So, can you tell us a little bit more about your robotic vacuums? Of course, thanks so much for coming for, to CES. So for this year we've got uh, two new robots including Forex Ultra and Forex Plus and some wet dry vacuums. So maybe you can give a quick look at these products. All right, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the specific booth and see what they got to offer. Let's go. Let's go. Also to note that they have early bird pricing right now. Check out the link down below. All right. It's actually a very nice booth by the way. Thanks. Hey, whoa, this is actually uh, pretty innovative. You got a lot, lot of different things going on, is that correct? Right, we have two products right over here, and this one you're looking at is Fruex Ultra, our latest flagship model, robot vacuum and mop. And here are some cool features in the screen. Oh, Maybe, nice. Uh, yeah, you can see some like top features oh, okay. uh, happening with the, um, the Fruex Ultra, including super strong 8200 Pascal suction power, zero hair tangling floating brush, um, third sense, self-contained dust processing, only one base station, tri-laser, nice. etc. Oh, it's got tri-lasers. We have some yeah, good demo stuff that we can look at th over there. All right, cool. Let's go ahead and continue. Yeah. Um, also, maybe um, let's take a look at this Fruex Plus, which is more mass market model, but includes many of the uh, core vacuuming features. Um, but let's get the demo units okay, first. Okay, sure. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. <laughs> We have a demonstration going on. Is this uh, regarding what, the hair tangling? Yeah, it's for zero hair tangling, which okay. is already certified by QV and SGS. But really, let's take a look to see how that works in action. All right, so this um, is a human hair right here? Yeah, let's try some human hair first. Yeah, I can see the spin super fast towards the end and nice. all sucked up. Um, maybe we can see it again because it was too fast. <laughs> so it just like goes into the side. That's right, so exactly. cool. Let's see some pet hair first as well. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, so you see the results. Yeah, it goes um, to the, sort of the corner yeah. and gone. Right, let's explain what the design works, uh, what's the design and how it works. So here you've got this more traditional brush, which is fixed on both ends. Uh, those ends are actually where ha hair can get most easily tangled. Right. Yeah, what we've done here is this, oh. what we call single air floating brush. It's fixed only on one end, okay. and the other end is literally floating, not fixed. Um, that leaves you extra space towards the end, which is like, um, air, you can't get tangled with air. And it can just suck it right up. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah, the other thing about this is the aerodynamic design, which guides the hair in one direction. Only. Right. So you can see the conical shape, kind of larger here and smaller there. And the bristles are also tilted into this direction. Oh, okay. So yeah. the directional line, it makes mm -hmm. a huge difference too. That's actually really right. cool. That's actually pretty innovative. Nice. Yeah. Um, we'll awesome. People will like it. Uh, then the second thing about this thing that's special is what we call dust compression technology. So um, kind of explaining the background a little bit, compared to some traditional self-empty stations, uh, a lot of them try to transfer the dust from the robot to the station right. where we have to travel through a long pipeline. Exactly. And those hair can get easily stuck in the pipeline. Uh, when we get stuck for weeks or even months, uh, bacteria can grow, odor can grow there, so that's uh, kind of gross. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, yeah. And also, it's super noisy. We don't have to travel that through, uh, travel through that kind of long pipeline. It's right. like a jet engine lasting for 20 seconds. What's innovative about, about this? Let's first see it in action. Is that this, with our very strong suction power, compresses the hair all uh, to the end and in a much denser state. Um, it does this over and over again every time the robot goes back to the station. Oh, wow. So over time, you can increase kind of the usage, the efficiency of the uh, physical space. This already gives you one liter of physical space with this dust smaller. Um, and with this compression, it basically gives you twice as much capacity of usage. So uh, the end result is that it gives you seven weeks of dust storage without maintenance needed. Oh, wow. Yeah. All That's while, smart. yeah. Oh, while not having to transfer anything from the robot to the station. So avoids kind of the clogging and noise issue. Um, you already heard it, it's like super, kind of a lot quieter. It's not uh, as loud as a jet engine. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's 20 decibels, uh, less noise oh, okay, with good. this. And that's only for five seconds versus 20 seconds you see with stations. Right, okay, that makes sense. Very cool. Yeah. And then um, over here, we got the uh, mopping system. Right, exactly. The mopping system, we have this triangular shaped elevates. spinning mops. Nice. Right, which also elevates to avoid carpets. That's and as good. it spins, it applies 12 newtons of pressure to the floor, which is twice the industry average. Um, and that gives you really effective scrubbing to remove stains. Nice. 
Now, I know uh, a lot of robot vacuums have an issue with this in terms uh -huh. of like the smell afterwards, uh -huh. like the mopping. Mm -hmm. how, did, did, how did you guys go about that? Yeah, so the important thing is this goes back to the station and the station will wash the mops wash it, over okay. and over again. We also had um, the station will automa automatically add detergent uh, to the mop. Oh, really? So, wow. Yeah, it cleans up more effectively. That's the first I heard that. I haven't heard that before. That's yeah. cool. Um, and on top of that, the station also dry the mops so it's less uh, wet. Um, so it's less uh, likely to get bacteria. odor or bacteria. Nice. Exactly. Uh, finally, you see this dirt sense here, which is um, a kind of dissection of what's happening inside the robot. We have okay. uh, sensors to monitor the level of dirtiness. So maybe you can give it a try, adding sure. some cocoa milk okay, um, so and cocoa see milk. how it reads. Yeah, you can see the screen. It shows the level of dirtiness here. Okay. Uh, it goes up as you have dirt goes into the robot. Similar things happen with a robot with a station where we see how uh, dirty the floors are, how dirty the mops are. So it keeps cleaning until the floor is cleaned, until the mops cleaned. Oh, wow, that's cool. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, we hope like this robot just helps users so they, they don't even have to think about how to set up the robot. And then it uh, looks like we have some other stuff going on here as well. Yeah, uh, we've got this wet dry vacuum, uh, oh, which okay. is for people who like more like an instant cleaning. Uh, they want to wait the, the robot to come. Um, this just helps you when there's some like quick dirt uh, on the floor. Maybe you can show uh, some ketchup and how this wet dry vacuum can clean it. Um, do you want to give it a try? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can take it out and once you just like, yeah, yep. and we'll start. So if you press the power button, uh, we'll start very soon. And you just like go over the messes, and you can see everything's clean in its wake. Uh, nothing's left. That is cool. You can even try and even says it's a percent detected exactly. of dirt. Yeah, I can see the dirt and apply different pressure, different suction power based on what it sees. That's cool. Yeah, you can even rotate left and right, like up to 63 degrees. So this is more uh, nimble, flexible, and more efficient to clean. That's cool. Yeah, finally, you can even lie it down totally flat. Yeah, so you can reach under a couch or bed. Very nice. Yeah, then when you're done, you just put it up straight. Yeah, there's a kind of click. There you go. Um, then you put it back to the station. Uh, it can even clean itself. Press its water button, starts to clean itself, wash itself, and dry itself. That is so cool. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. That is the future of cleaning. <laughs> Yeah. This is how the robot works in action. You can see uh, we talk about this tri-laser system and the side laser in particular is unique. Nobody else has that. And it can uh, accurately detect what's um, near it and go around those obstacles accurately. Oh, okay. What's the difference also in the algorithm? We try to balance cleaning coverage and obstacle avoidance. Some of the people in the market try to uh, avoid the obstacle from by staying super far away from them, but in that way you don't clean the area around the obstacles. We try to stay close to the obstacles um, while avoiding them, so then clean all the areas without anything left, oh. while also avoiding the collision. And then when it goes on the carpet, the mop will go oh, up as exactly, well. Exactly, to avoid wetting the carpet. That is pretty cool. All right, so let's do a quick little test and see if we can avoid vector, and oh! <laughs> It went around it, look at that. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. <laughs> and I'm right. looking well, forward to seeing what else you guys have coming up in the future. Thank you so much for your bye -bye. time. Uh, bye bye.